of all of our Sunday school classes, older classes, passed one of these out. If you did not sign up, uh, amen. Brother Harper, how many people did you have in your class this morning? Nine. Nine? Nine -ish. Oh, okay. One of the names of mine was from another class. Okay, so Brother Harper had two people in his class out of nine that signed up for prayer and fasting. That's the college and career class. Were you in that class? I was. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. It was okay. announced at the end. Amen. <laughs> <It was rushing. laughs> Hallelujah. Next Saturday is our day. Caleb, were you in that class? Okay. Oh, oh, there you go. Amen. Please. Amen. Sign up. Hallelujah. If you were in here, well, that's since we did that, brother Caleb, let me look at the adults. Uh, Hallelujah. Well, how many, how many folks did you have in here? Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. The fourth Saturday of every month, we from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., we, we, we put our name down that during that hour of that day, Chris, you're going to pray. Amen. And then we meet here at 6 o'clock as a church family and pray. You don't have to pray for that whole hour, but the 6 to 7 o'clock time frame, we do gather here, and we, we simply pray. Amen. We don't, we don't, we may fellowship a little bit before, before and a little bit after, but we just gather for prayer. And it is very, very needed. Our world needs more praying Christians. Can you say amen? And so if you did not sign up, I won't embarrass anybody else. Uh, amen. But please sign up and help us. And it is important. And it's just as important to be here at 6 o'clock for United Prayer. Uh, unless, of course, uh, uh, you know, if you have to work during that time, uh, we do understand. Amen. Or if there's an emergency that arises, of course, we understand. But that prayer time is just as important as, uh, as the service right here. Right. Amen. I believe our Wednesday night service is just as important as this service. I do understand we have a number of people who have to work. Uh, that's, uh, uh, and, and we do understand that. This world that we're living in, we do have to. Uh, but but it, is, it is important. Corporate prayer, uh, corporate worship is very, very, very important. Amen. So please uh, make sure that list is at the back. And you can put your name on that join us. There'll be some reminders this week, phone calls. Amen. Today, uh, brother, this is Brother Jacob's last service with us. He's getting ready to go to uh, ABI, Apostolic Bible Institute, uh, in Minnesota. Is that right, Minnesota? Amen. One of our Bible colleges, and he's going to be gone, uh, but he will be returning, I am sure, from time to time. Amen. And uh, we're going to pray that God be with him. Uh, as he leaves. So before he leaves today, at the end of the service, we're going to gather around him and pray uh, God's hand of protection. Amen. And God's going to be uh, with him. Amen. And if God sees fit uh, to bring him back here uh, for ministry, we pray that he would always uh, hear God's voice. Amen. And listen to God's perfect will. Uh, for his life and let the church say amen. Amen. I'm going to uh, preach today about something that is very, very important. And some of the notes I will use will be from uh, some of the classes that we teach, uh, the journey class that uh, we've been going through, uh, the abundant life course that we go through. They're the most important thing on this earth is not learning how to balance your budget, uh, it's not even learning how to control addictions. It's not learning how to control your temper. It's not uh, uh, learning how to be a good citizen in society. The most important thing in this world and in your life is salvation. And knowing what it takes to be saved. Amen. What it takes to be saved. Salvation is essential. Salvation is essential. Because you can take medication to control your temper. You can take you can't. You can take medication to do all sorts of control 
anything just about. There are a lot of side effects to different medications. But there's only one way to be saved. That's right. And that's through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing about that prescription that I just gave you is there are no bad negative side effects. You don't have to worry about anything. Once you are saved and you've committed your life to God, everything else in this world, if you get that right relationship with Him, that salvation ushers you into, everything else will be taken care of. I'm not saying that you won't have problems, but salvation and a right relationship with Jesus Christ diminishes those problems. Amen. They're not as bad. and They don't have the negative effects uh, that the enemy would like for them to have upon you. I'm so glad uh, that I am saved. And somebody say amen. amen. John chapter 6 and verse 66. John chapter 6 and verse 66 through 68 in your New Testament. says, and this is Jesus and his disciples together. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What? Jesus. God manifested on the, in, in flesh. Work miracles. These people, Brother Barrington, they were there when the loaves and fishes were multiplied. They were there when the blind eyes were opened. Okay? Many of them were there when the paralytic was healed. But it says that they went back and walked no more with him. And then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You see, we've got to make him our everything. Yes. There is no other way to walk than with Jesus. There is no other way to walk than with Jesus. For the sake of the video, we'll just say salvation is essential. Salvation is essential. Everyone say in Jesus' name. I pray if there's someone here that has not experienced true biblical salvation in Jesus name let these words reach down and touch their hearts their souls and their minds and everybody say amen, amen. God bless you as you're seated today I mean there are many times that things go on that we really don't know about I forgot to mention last and I do apologize greatly uh, but last Saturday afternoon sister Mona's uh, uh, granddaughter Brianna uh, wanted to, she's been visiting church here, been coming for uh, several months, but uh, uh, she wanted to be baptized. And so last Saturday afternoon, uh, we gathered here and baptized her in the saving name of Jesus. Uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, uh, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved amen and so salvation is essential uh, and there are many many people who will tell you what you must do to be saved uh, uh, but I want to understand today that it's not people who save me and it's not the words of people that save me but it is the word of God that must be where I look to find uh, my salvation and if I want to know what it takes to be saved uh, I don't just need to listen uh, uh, to this uh, uh, guy up here. I need to look to the Word. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to preach to you only what the Word of God says uh, and I'm not going to give you anything else uh, because if I try to give you what I think, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, I got my mind stayed on Jesus uh, and so I'm going to take the words of God and give them to you. Is that all right? Yeah. Would you, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, right. I wouldn't listen to somebody that was just going to fill me full of a bunch of garbage. Uh, I I want the Word of God. Can someone say amen? amen? And I want to be saved because there is coming a reckoning day. Uh, whether it is uh, the second return of the Lord or whether it is that you go into eternity today. Uh, I want us to understand, uh, amen, that we must be saved to be able to have eternal life and not eternal damnation. Amen. amen. 
Amen. Amen. And so I want to know what it takes uh, to be saved. The book of uh, uh, Titus tells us. Uh, well, first I want to say uh, John 10 and 1. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth into the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Uh, there is only one way to Jesus Christ. Uh, there's only one way to get in the good old gospel ship. Uh, there's only one way to make it into heaven. Uh, amen. I know, uh, I heard uh, George W. Bush say in an interview uh, at one time, uh, there are many spokes on the wheel that all lead uh, to the same way. There is only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. Uh, I do apologize if this offends you, but the, the Bible way, the Holy Bible way, is the only way, and it is essential. And there are not many ways of salvation in the Holy Bible. There, are, there is only one way into salvation. First, I want to tell you, you've got to take the whole book. You can't take a piece here and a piece there. You've got to have the whole book. Uh, amen. I know you can read one scripture and it says this, and that is a part of it. But you've got to put all the pieces of this, of this puzzle together. But he that hunger and thirsteth after righteousness, uh, he shall be filled. Uh, and if you really want to know uh, how to get there, you look in the Bible uh, and the, the Spirit of God will lead you. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we've got to understand John 14 and 1. Jesus saith unto him, he said, I am the way, the truth, uh, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, amen. It is not any other way, and I'm not going to mention uh, any other religions, uh, because there is only one way. Uh, amen. And that's what the Word of God says. Uh, I don't have to argue. I don't have to put anybody else down. All I have to do is look at what the Word of God says. Uh, I don't even have to debate this That's because right. there is no debate. That's the right. Word of God is forever settled in heaven. Amen. Being a good person isn't just going to get you into heaven. Right. Amen. Yeah. It takes salvation through Jesus Christ uh, to get you uh, where I want to go, eternal life. Uh, uh, Titus 3 and 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, uh, which we have done, but according to His mercy. Somebody say His mercy. His mercy. His mercy. So everybody say His mercy. His mercy. His mercy. Uh, amen. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ uh, has been applied through our lives uh, through repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Uh, and it's a cleansing that takes place uh, continually amen. inside amen. of us. Uh, amen. Uh, and there's a renewing uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. That must take place place uh, inside right. of each and every one of you. If you've ever been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, it doesn't need to happen just one time. You need to be renewed in the Spirit yeah. over and over and over again. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't hurt you to be renewed every day. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Salvation is essential. Amen. The most important thing that could ever happen in my life, amen, is salvation. Amen. There are a lot of people who are putting a lot of stock in the upcoming election. I want us to understand whatever happens is already, it, God, God's got it all in, to, in control. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. My stock is not in the election. Amen. My stock is in the Word of God. This election uh, may be important to a certain manner, but your salvation is more important yes. than any election. I'm glad there are three or four people who agree with that. Amen. I want us to understand salvation is so important. Right. There is nothing else in this world that matters other than salvation. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. Amen. And if you are saved, you need to get a relationship with God that will help you keep your eyes upon Him. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to uh, salvation. Uh, amen. It's free to you and I, but there is a price uh, of salvation. Uh, amen. God, uh, amen, has given us uh, salvation. He paid the debt for you and I. Uh, amen. And we need to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. 
There are a lot of scriptures, and if you just put them by themselves, you would say, okay, uh, all right, what does it take to be saved? If I read James 1 and 21, it says, uh, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able, able to save your soul. So all i got to do is, is look to the word, and that's the only thing. Well, yes, I, I've got to look to the word, but then I have to obey the word. Can you say amen? I can sit around uh, uh, like some uh, holy man of old and just read the Bible 24 hours a day, uh, uh, you know, and turn the, the lights down. Uh, uh, dim and maybe uh, put a little bit of incense burning in the house and act like, oh, uh, I, I'm just, uh, you know, I read the Bible all the time. I know a lot of people who do read the Bible all the time, talk about the Bible all the time, but they don't do anything that the Bible says. Yeah, right. So just looking to the Word is not enough. I have to obey the Word. There are a lot of people who come to church and hear what this man says and what the Word of God says. But hearing does not do it. You've got to do what the Word says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Peter 3 and 21 says, Baptism doth also now save us. And so if I took that one scripture all by itself, I said, well, all, all i got to do is to be baptized. And I could go out here and, and, and put up a, a, a little pool on the, on the street corner and tell everybody that comes by, hey, hey we, we, all you got to do is to be, uh, you just need to be baptized. And take that one scripture and say, look, this is all you got to do to be saved is just be baptized. But it's not just that. Baptism doth also now save us. But it's not the act of baptism alone that saves us. Right. Somebody say amen. 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 And then if I look to Acts chapter 2 and verse 40, it says save yourself from this untoward generation. We're living in a bad generation. Can you say amen? amen. Well, if I took that one scripture, oh, I've got to save myself. Nothing else. I've got to say, how do I save myself? You see, all of this stuff works together. Does anybody get what I'm trying to say to you today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got to take all of this stuff together. Amen. I, 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 I'm telling you, Brother, uh, Brother Harper, I was talking uh, this morning. I was telling somebody, uh, sometimes I feel like I, I wish I could just be John the Baptist. That all I have just be a, 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 a reed out in the wilderness. I'm going to go out here all by myself. I mean, it's just going to be me and Jesus. In the morning, I'm going to go outside. I'm not going to worry about anybody else. Just gonna, I, I'm just going to be out here. Uh -huh. well, I, I don't have to worry about anybody. I'm going to save myself. Fooey on the rest of you. Y'all go, well, you get, get yourself saved. I got to take care of me. Amen. But you want to know what? Hey, man, I, I can't do that, Chris. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. For one thing, I realize if I left, you'd be here all alone. You need me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, but I can't save myself. Hey, Amen. I do need to look to the Word of God. But I've got to look into the whole Word. Can someone say amen? Amen. amen. I, I, one thing I want us to understand, I will never be good enough to earn my salvation. There is nothing that I can do. It is all given to me freely uh, through grace and mercy. Uh, I'm so glad that mercy uh, is just not, uh, it's not measured out. Uh, amen. It, it is unmeasurable. I'm so glad that grace uh, is not just divvied up. Uh, it, there is an abundant uh, grace. Can somebody say amen? And it is given to us. Amen. We are all saved through His mercy and through His grace. Amen. And it's not by the works of righteousness. We're all going to go through trials and tests as a Christian. Can anybody say amen? amen. We have problems. Amen. But that's all a part of life. And just because you've begun a walk with God doesn't mean that there won't be any more problems. There will be problems. Yeah. But the most important thing is, is that you stay in the shit. And you don't get out. Amen. Just because there are problems. Hallelujah. Lord, where would I go? I can't go anywhere but with you. Are you going to lead me too? No. I am here. Amen. If I look to the Word, Matthew 10 and 22 says, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. If I take that one scripture there, all i got to do is be a hard head. i just got to stick it out. I'm not giving up. No. I don't have to do anything but just stick it out. Proverbs 28 and 18 says, Whoso walketh uprightly 
shall be saved. So to be saved, you have to have good posture. If I look at that one scripture alone, anybody that doesn't have good posture, is they're not going to make it to heaven. So this is the church of teaching good, good posture. Amen. If I sit up straight, you're going to hell. You slumped. I see you slumped over over there. Get up. I mean, that's your problem. If you'd sit up right, your life might be right. That's right. If you'd walk up straight, you'd be okay. Luke 7, 36 says, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. All i got to do is have faith. Acts 11 and 14 says, Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? John 10 and 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved. All we got to do is find a door. The right door. And we're going to be saved. Amen. Isaiah 45 and 22 says, Look unto me and be saved all ends of the earth. Acts 16 and 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Ephesians 2, 5 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Romans 10 and 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If I looked at that, I hear a lot of people get mad. First thing they say is, Jesus Christ, but not in a good way. Well, they're calling on the name of the Lord. I used to listen to my grandparents fuss. And my grandfather would say, my, you know, G-O-D. And I don't even feel safe saying it. Even, well, he's calling on God. So if I take that one scripture, do you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that you can pull out of here all by themselves. Amen. But they are all pieces to a puzzle. Right. Amen. But ultimately, our salvation must be built upon faith. Somebody say faith. Amen. First and foremost, it takes faith. Amen. And when we put our faith and our trust in God, He will save us. That's what the Scripture tells me. Amen. And when I get to know God, that's the absolute foundation that we must have in our life. It is uh, that, that stone is, is faith. We must have faith for to come to God. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. And I could give you Scripture after Scripture. But if I'm going to be saved, I, I first I, I must have faith in God. In the One that's going to save me. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the only one. It's Him. So I've got to have faith. And then, amen, once I put that faith in God, I'm going to obey the words of God. Amen. Salvation is essential. Amen. Then, amen, once I believe in God and I put my faith and my trust in Him, amen, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repent. Somebody say repent. Repent, repent uh, is an old British military command. And that word repent, as these soldiers would march, that command would be given. And when someone is commanded to repent, they simply turn around and walk in the opposite direction. Amen. So repentance ultimately is, amen, turning away from one way and going in another. Amen. You ask God to forgive you. There are a lot of people who come down to the altar. They'll do something wrong. They'll pray, oh God, I'm sorry. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. And then they get up and they go back out and they do the same thing over and over again. That is not repentance. Amen. A lot of people, the reason that they, they are not saved is because when they repented, they continued to walk in the same direction. All you did was say that you were sorry. Amen. If I step on your toe when I walk by and I say, oh, Sister Gail, I'm sorry that I did that. But every time I walk by, I step on her toe again. Eventually, she's going to have a problem with me. Because if I was truly sorry about stepping on her toe, I would stop doing it. A lot of us say, oh God, I'm sorry that I did that, but we continue in the same stuff. Yeah. It doesn't work. Repentance means you turn around and you walk in a different direction. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say, I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Job 42 and 6 says, Repent in dust and ashes. 1 Kings 8, 47 through 50 says, If they shall, if they shall repent. Uh, amen. Matthew 4 and 17 says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you look in the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament, uh, Amen. Jesus, John the Baptist came preaching. Jesus came teaching. The apostles continued uh, to preach the message of repentance. Uh, uh, Luke 13 and 3 says, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise uh, perish. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, Not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. Uh, repentance not only means feeling sorry uh, for your sins, uh, but, uh, but making an about face, uh, having a change of heart and a change of mind, and asking God to forgive you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We've had a lot of people. We have relationships uh, in our own minds uh, where somebody tells us sorry for something, but they continue to do the same thing. Folks, uh, we need to repent. Stop doing the stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Uh, amen. Uh, we've got to have a change of heart and a change of mind when we ask God to forgive us. Because he is just and faithful to forgive us. Amen. Repentance. And that right there, that little, that little crook and nanny, you see, uh, gets a lot of people hung up. Because when you truly repent, that's when the grace, it is there. You say, well, I can't do it. No, you can't do it. But through the power of God, you can walk in the direction that you're supposed to be walking. I can. Yes, you can. The scripture tells me I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. When I repent of my sins, the next thing that I've got to do is I must be baptized in Jesus' name. We go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. On the day of Pentecost, Peter was preaching. Jesus had already ascended up into heaven. They had been in Jerusalem for 10 days praying, waiting for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost fell. They began to speak in other tongues. Amen. The crowd in the street uh, got to wondering what was going on up there in the upper room. And so, hey, they hollered out, hey, what's going on up there? Are y'all drunk? They were getting loud. A lot of noise going on there. You know, a lot of times we come into our church service and people are dancing, clapping their hands, uh, even running the aisles. And go, oh, why, those little, why, why, the, why are those kids running the aisles? Well, they shouldn't be doing that. Well, we worship. I would much rather teach a child or see a child running the aisles. Uh-oh. I would much rather see you lift up your hands and shout a little bit. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. What's going on? Are y'all drunk up there? And Peter said, hey, these men are not drunk. Seeing how it's only 9 o'clock in the, in the morning. And, and, and good people don't get drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. Now that doesn't mean that it's okay to get drunk any other time of the day. Amen. But I want to He said, it's only 9 o'clock, so they're not up here. They're not drunk. And he began to preach a message about Jesus Christ and about how he was crucified and the promise that was given through Jesus Christ. And they said, hey, what must we do? What do we have to do to be saved? Amen. And so Peter preached in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Water baptism. The word baptizo, that Greek word, Brother Harper, means to be immersed. Totally put under. Sprinkling won't do it. You've got to go under the water. And someone say amen. 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 Uh, you've got to be baptized. And the name that must be called over you is the name of Jesus. You can study, historically speaking, it was not until 325 A.D. 325 A.D. That anyone was baptized in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
Uh -huh. The encyclopedia and Christian and theologians will teach you that no one in the New Testament was ever baptized any other way than in the name of Jesus. Right. If it was good enough for Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the disciples, and all of those on the day of Pentecost, and the New Testament church, if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Acts 22 and 16 says, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Our sins are washed away in the waters of baptism. John 3 and 5 says, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Peter said in Acts 2 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Luke 24 and 47 says, Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in, the in his name among all nations. Acts 8 and 16 says, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Baptism. I get excited when someone's repented of their sins and they're baptized in Jesus' name. I, it was so beautiful when Brianna uh, was, was, uh, was baptized last Saturday. You know, because she's a, she's, she's just, she's, she was baptized. She was, you know, her her herself. You know, she's a, a little bit sar a little sar not. I don't want to say sarcastic, but she's a she's a little, you know. Yeah, there you go. And she's a great person. But when she come up out of those waters, she was overcome with emotion. Doesn't like to show the emotion of crying, but she couldn't help it. Her tears begin to well up inside her. She's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, that's normal. Amen. Because there's something beautiful that has just happened to you. Your sins have now been washed away. Right. Hallelujah. Now, not everybody cries. Some people come up just with a big old smile on their face. Some people come up out of the water speaking in other tongues. Amen. It's all right. Amen. But I must be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts 4 and 12 says there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So Peter preached a message. And he says when you've repented of your sins, you've been baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. Jesus spoke of it in John chapter 14. Uh, amen. And, and, and he purchased the church, uh, it says, through his blood. Uh, amen. In Acts 20 and verse 28. It started on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and on this day, many received the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking uh, in an unknown tongue they had not learned. And the same experience is still available today. For anybody who wishes to draw close to God, if you want the Holy Ghost, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Romans 8 and 9 says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Matthew 3 and 11, uh, John the Baptist is speaking. He said, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts 1 and 5 says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Acts 2 and 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Well, the greatest thing to ever happen, amen, the greatest experience is the Holy Spirit coming to reside inside of this body. God honors us with His Spirit living inside of us. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the most beautiful pictures that I have, amen, uh, is, is of my daughter receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. How old were you? Eight? At this altar, Caleb, Got a picture of Caleb with his hands lifted up in an orange shirt. Amen. I see that picture right now. And missionary Charles Robinette is praying over him. He's praying with Caleb. Now, Caleb, you look at, and all of you know Caleb, don't look at him now. But you know, he's not a real emotional guy. You know, he's just, uh, uh, he doesn't, you know, he's just not. He's not going to hug you and say, oh, I love you. 
He's just not that kind of person. He doesn't get it from me. I'm not sure where he gets that from. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he was here praying. And Brother Robinette was praying with him. And Caleb was getting nowhere. And Brother Robinette stopped and said, Caleb, Caleb, do you remember how old you were? Ten, nine, ten years old? Ten, uh, nine, I think. Nine. Yeah. Uh, and he stopped. He said, Caleb, you don't have to cry to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, some people will cry. But as soon as Brother Robinette said that, Caleb lifted his hands back up and he began to pray. And it was just in a matter of seconds that Caleb began to speak with other tongues. Those two pictures are, and I don't, I can see, I don't have a picture of Connor. You've got a picture? Okay. Okay. Well, I need that picture so I can look to it. Those pictures, and my, my children love to take selfies. And they, they got literally, you know, you won't see all of them, but they, they've got pictures all over social media and stuff and Snapchat and everywhere else. And, and I've got some, and you, there are some beautiful young people in this church. And everybody say amen. amen. But the most beautiful picture that I have of my children is when their hands were lifted up. And they were filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I need to hurry because the beauty in that is the Spirit of God is living. And you see, God is no respecter of persons. They are children. Why would He? But He gives His Spirit to a child. And He'll give His Spirit that same service, there was an elderly man who came up to the altar and was filled with the Holy Ghost. That Caleb, where missionary Robinette was here, that's been years ago. God doesn't care if they're young or they're old. God doesn't care whether they're male or female. God doesn't care that their race. All He cares is that there's a heart that is hungry. There's a heart that is hungry and wants my spirit. And that promise is given. Acts chapter 2 and verse 39 says, for the promise, and that's what the Holy Ghost is, it's a promise. For the promise, it's for you. And it's for your children. And it's for them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's for everybody. All you have to do is open up your heart and your mind and you'll experience the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want to ask you to stand to your feet right now. Salvation is essential. And knowing how to be saved is of utmost importance. I remember watching... A debate one time about salvation and it was good to know I remember watching the debate one time about the oneness of God and it was good to know but you see we don't have to debate this we don't have to argue about this we don't have to prove somebody wrong because God doesn't want to prove anybody wrong all He wants to do is say, I love you. There's a way to come unto me. And you just walk through the door. And that door is open. Just put your faith and your trust in Him. And I know, and that's why we continue to have a relationship with God once we receive salvation. Because I'm going to stumble and I'm going to fall and I'm going to make this mistakes, but there is a washing, there's a regeneration that takes place when I have that right relationship with Him, that I have a blessed assurance. I want to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to tell you today, and I, I, I know I'm not the most eloquent and that doesn't bother me. But 
But if you're here and you've never repented of your sins, you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, never been filled with the Holy Ghost, I want to tell you that's one thing that you don't need to put off. There are a lot of things that you can put off, but your salvation is not one of them. So I want to tell you, you can find it today because it's here. Put your faith and your trust in Him. Begin to let Him know, Lord, I want to live for You. I want to be saved. You're repenting your sins. You can have those sins washed away through the waters of baptism. The blood of Jesus is applied to your life. And God will fill you with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're here today and you, you have this biblical salvation that I've preached about for the last few minutes, it would do you good to come up here and say, Lord, I'm so thankful for my salvation. Lord, I'm so thankful that you forgave me of my sins and I'm so thankful that you're here every day, Lord. Every day, Lord. You haven't left me. I'm so thankful that you feel me full of your spirit. I'm so thankful, Lord Jesus. I'm so thankful. If you're here and maybe things aren't exactly right with you and the Lord, I want to tell you, you can make it right. One little conversation with God. See Him this morning. And I'll tell you, you'll find Him. If you see Him this morning, you'll find Him. Wherever you're at in this place this morning, whether you're at your seat or you're down here, you'll just bow your head, close your eyes, take a moment to just talk to the Lord, and then listen.